In this video, I will show you how to use generative fill in Photoshop Beta to turn any photo into a painting. I discovered this method from Martin Geller's video and I spent several days experimenting with it. I believe I found a way to take it to the next level and even control the amount of stylization, not just the media of the created artwork. First of all, I want to demonstrate to you that if we are just making a selection, I'm using Command or Control A, select the whole image and using the contextual taskbar, I click on Generative Fill. If I type in something like oil painting, it's just going to generate a completely new layer and it won't generate the new layer based on the existing image that we have in this document, which is, by the way, a free photo from Adobe Stock. You can find the link in the description below if you want to download it and follow along this tutorial. So as you can see, the result that we got, all the three variations are completely just random and they have nothing in common to the image that we wanted to use. So to fix this, I'm going to delete this layer and I'm going to use the channels panel, which you can find in the window menu. And here you will have to create a new alpha channel. Just click on the new icon at the bottom and then once you have this new alpha channel created, go to your color picker and change the brightness, the B value to 30. Once you have that, click OK and then press Alt or Option Backspace to fill in the alpha channel with this color. I'm going to click on the RGB channel and then I'm going to Command or Control click on the alpha channel's thumbnail. I'm going to ignore this warning. It is just telling me that this selection cannot be visualized. So I'm going to click OK. And then up here, we have the generative field in the contextual taskbar. By the way, if you don't see this, it's also something you can access from the window menu. So here I'm going to click on generative field. And now I am going to type in oil painting again. As you can see, the results are already better. So we have the three variations. And they are looking quite nice. If we zoom a little bit closer, once again, we can switch back and forth between the photo and the painting version. So this is one variation. This is another one and the third one. They are all looking quite nice. Now, the most important thing to learn is how we can control the amount of stylization. Because currently, this is actually quite close to the original photo. But what if we want to make it a little bit more abstract? So for that, we will need to create another alpha channel. Once again, we come back to the channels panel, click on the new icon. And now instead of filling this with a 30% brightness value, I'm going to increase the value up to 50%. So I'm going to click OK. And then again, alter option backspace to fill this in with the foreground color. Then once again, switch back to RGB. And by the way, just so we can remember what we've done on these channels, I'm going to rename them. And the first one was 30 and the second one was 50. So now we have this new channel. I'm going to again use command or control click on that thumbnail to make a selection. This time you won't get a warning. And then before we hit generative fill, I just make sure that the original image is visible. So I'm going to hide the other generative fill layer. So now I'm going to type in again the same prompt, oil painting. And what you can notice immediately is that compared to the previous example, we got a much more artistic or stylized version. So this was the previous one, which looks much closer to the original photo. So there's the first painting we created. And then the second one looks much more stylized, more abstract. And there's actually a couple of other variations which look even more abstract. So there is always a randomness factor. But in general, the higher the brightness value in your alpha channel, the more stylized the result will get. So what if we reduce the brightness value of our alpha channel even lower than 30? Is it going to be even more detailed? And the answer is yes. However, it is actually getting too close to the original photo in most cases. But there is another trick I want to show you. So first of all, let's just create that new channel. I'm going to create just for demonstration purposes, a brightness value of 10. And for that, we will also need this color edit. So I'm just using the same method, filling this in with the foreground color using that shade of gray, which is brightness set to 10 in the color picker. 
I am going to go back to RGB and turn off the previous two layers. Now I'm going to command or control click on this new alpha channel, the one we just created, the B10. I'll click OK and I'm going to type in again oil painting. As you can see from a distance this almost looks like a photo. Only if I zoom closer we will start to notice that it is slightly stylized. So if I switch back and forth you can still see that it's supposed to be a painting but just something that's a very realistic painting. However, I found that if I want to keep things realistic but still make it look like it's a painting, it is good to use certain filters before we apply the generative fill function. So I'm going to turn off this layer, select my original image which is my background layer and I'm actually going to convert this into a smart object. So right click, convert to smart object which will allow me to use filters non-destructively so we can apply them as smart filters. And the first one, then most obvious one to use is the blur or Gaussian blur. So I'm just going to select that one and maybe set it to 10 pixels. That's quite a high amount of blur. But once we apply this and we combine it with our B10 alpha channel, we will get a different result with the generative fill. So I'm going to type in the same prompt once again. And you can see if I zoom closer that although it is a detailed painting, it is lower in contrast because we had a blurred image to begin with. So comparing the two previous results, it's going to create a very different style for us. So even though we were using the same alpha channel, the result is very different. Now you might say that this is a bit too blurry and it we lost too much detail. In that case, instead of using the blur, we can use other filters. So I'm going to turn off that smart filter and go back to my background layer. One of them that I found to be working quite well is called Crystallize. It's in the pixelate category. So once you select this, you will be able to preview how it looks and probably the cell size can be reduced a little bit, something like that. Let's click OK and you can see how this looks. And then additionally, I'm going to also add the Stylize Find Edges filter which doesn't have any settings, it just immediately applies that to the layer. However, because we are using it as a smart filter, we can assign a blend mode to this particular filter by double clicking on this icon here. And we change the blend mode to linear burn or darker color. Either of these work quite nicely. So we can see now that we applied it without the find edges, this is what we got. And with the find edges together, we have this result. So now I'm going to zoom back a bit and let's again use that B10 alpha channel. Command or control click on its thumbnail and then choose generative fill. Same prompt, oil painting. And there you go, yet again we get a slightly different result. So if I zoom closer and compare it to the previous versions, we can see the one where we use blur compared to these other filters. And we can also compare it to the one where we didn't use filters. So that's without filters. This is with the filters once again. And without the filters, it's just too realistic. With the filters, we get that additional stylization and artistic flair that we were missing. So to summarize, you have two ways of controlling the stylization. One is with the shade of gray that you are using in your alpha channel. The brighter shade of gray you are using, the higher the stylization will get. But if this doesn't give you enough control, then there is this other technique of using smart filters on the original image with which you can fine tune or increase the amount of stylization that you want to see in the final result. The more filters you apply or the higher amount you are using in your filters will always create more stylized results. And of course, you don't have to stick to the filters that I showed here in this demonstration. You can experiment with other ones and depending on the image that you work with, others might work better. And if you come up with a good combination, please make sure you share it in the comments below. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. 
As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. To save you time, I also created an action for you, which you can download from the link in the description below. All you have to do is to sign up to our newsletter to get access to this. But essentially what this action will do for you is to create all the various alpha channels in your document from B10 to B90 and also turn your layer into a smart object and apply Gaussian Blur as a smart filter. So this just makes it much quicker and easier to get started. So for instance, here, if I go to select B30, I can go to generative fill and type in water color painting. And we can check the three variations that we got. I probably prefer the first one the most. And then don't forget that you can also combine this technique with the generative expand option, which you can use with the crop tool. So just select the crop tool by pressing C on the keyboard. And let's just say we would like to turn this into a portrait image. I'm going to zoom out. Yeah, maybe something like that. Just make sure that the fill is set to generative expand. And in the contextual taskbar, you can type in something if you want to control what you would like to see there. But I'm just going to hit generate and see what Photoshop will come up with to fill in those details. So the first one actually added some water here, which could be the Thames since this is London. But then we have these two other versions where we just have a foliage or trees. And I quite like this one. It almost looks like a pointy list painting. But to make it look even more like a painting, I'm going to use the crop tool again. But this time I have set it back to transparent and I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key to extend the canvas in all directions. I'm trying to roughly create the same space all around and I press enter and I am going to create a new layer at the bottom. It's a solid color layer. Fill it in with white and click OK and place it all the way at the bottom. And now I'm going to select all my other three layers, group them together with Command or Control G and add a layer mask on this group. Now I switch to my brush tool and from the brush presets, I am going to use one of the default wet media brushes. I quite like to work first with the classic cartoonist brush. I just select this, increase the brush size and I make sure my foreground color is set to black. You can easily do that by pressing D on the keyboard. And in this case, we have to press X as well to swap the colors around. Now, all I have to do is to paint around the edges. I try to keep it organic, not completely straight. And this creates a nice effect here, almost as if paint drying or blending into the paper. And there's one final simple technique to make it look more like a real painting and that's to create texture, make it look like it's on canvas. And for this, all we need to do is to create a new layer on top of everything else. Then fill this layer with 50% gray. That's shift backspace. And from the contents, just choose that option. Click OK and then go to the filter menu. And from stylize, you actually can find an option called oil paint. Once you select that, you can use any setting that you prefer. You can also copy the values that I have here. Once I apply this, it created this effect. And then if we change the blend mode of this layer to either overlay or soft light, it's going to add that interesting texture to our painting, which of course can be further toned down by reducing the opacity if you want. But one additional thing that you can do is to also just slightly change the color of the background. Remember, we created it as a solid color layer. Just double click on the thumbnail there and reduce the brightness from completely white to slightly darker gray value. And that way you can also start to see the texture showing up outside of the frame or the image. I want to keep it very subtle. Click OK and then zoom back. So we can see now the image without the texture and with the texture. Once again, zoomed a little bit closer without the texture and with the texture. 
There is of course a lot more that you can do with this technique and if you're interested to find out more ways to use it, make sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for our future videos. I will see you guys in the next one.